Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Ancient Terrible Things has an expansion called The Last Charter, and this is going to add a few things to the game, but it's not going to be groundbreaking. You're going to get an additional character that you can play. You're going to have the ability to play this with five players. If you've been wanting to play this with five players, this is going to allow that to happen. You're going to get a few more cards that do a few things. There's a new uh, mechanism called Foreshadowing that allows you to put uh, your token on a card that somebody else already played and try to go after it. And you kind of have these like negative points that you have to earn away. And that's pretty neat. Uh, it also comes with uh, pieces that make the game a little bit more travel friendly. So it takes the board away and adds cards. Um, sure. I guess a little bit more travel friendly if you wanted to play this in a car. But I don't know why this is the game that you'd pick to play in a car. Otherwise, um, this is probably a miss for me. I don't think there's enough here for me to want to play... Uh, for pay for this expansion. I don't think this is a game that I was like dying to play five players. It isn't a game that I would like to. It's nice to have the variety of the extra character. Um, but I don't think there's enough here to warrant me adding this to my collection. And I'm going to go ahead and purge this one. Now I'm going to tell you to get the base game first and only get this one if what you see here is interesting to you. It's not an insta-buy when you get the main game. Here's Ancient Terrible Things, the Lost Charter expansion. The artwork matches perfectly uh, with the original game. I believe they were kickstarted and came out together. The expansion is pretty good. It gives you an explanation of some of the new cards. And this is the this is the setup for the travel edition that comes with this. And then how to incorporate the fifth player and the solo game. So really nice. You're gonna get a new character, the Prophetess. So she'll just give you somebody else to play. This is strictly used just as for the travel game. You won't use that most of the time. You get three new dice. You will get a new token, which you will have to sticker yourself if you want to take a good look at her. Just double on the side. Get more stickers. No explanation of what the stickers are for. I had leftover stickers from the original game. And then you're going to get new cards. We're going to get a few new achievements, which I'll go over in the flow of the game. You're going to get a few more encounters, not many, a few. Some new swag cards, some new feet cards. Uh, you're going to get these new upgrades for the characters from the base game and this game. And these cards are used for the travel edition. So if you don't want to take the board with you, you can just take these with you and they use as placeholders. That's what they're for. So you put these out instead of the board. The rules for this expansion are pretty clear. I didn't have any issues with them or any problems. Um, I was able to kind of figure out what was going on. It's more modular, I guess, than anything. It gives you the ability to play travel, the ability to play five player, and there's an extra character, and you just have some cards that you shuffle in. So there isn't a whole lot to learn other than a few little cards and that new foreshadowing that happens. Okay, so I'm going to put aside the... Uh, components that are used just for the travel edition. You can look at those at your leisure in the component section. I'm going to show you what comes in this. And they're modules, so you can use what you want. These are obsessions that each character can get. It includes all the characters from the, the base game and the new one. And basically, they're negative points, and they're a little bit different for everybody. So two, 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 and the new character has three. And they tell you that this foreshadowing, and all that means is if somebody fails something, you can put your character on it and try to accomplish it. And if you accomplish what they failed, then you can get rid of this card, thus getting rid of the negative points. That's all that means. Each character has one, so there's some negative points, and you have to earn your way out of it. That's how they work. We're going to have some new swag. Let's take a look and see what's in this. All this works the same, just kind of some different things and 
So there's a Gadget Dice pull now, includes additional Revelation Dice, Exhaust this, some ways to score victory points for having Courage at the end. So just some extra things that you can buy in the game. You're going to have some new Thief cards. Uh, pay to get treasure, a bad hoodoo, take a paste down terrible thing token from the box and add it to any location. Now this is some things you're going to see. You're going to see a lot more playing with these terrible things which are negative victory points. Refresh and exhaust the swag card. But just more things you can do in the game. Choose an opponent and look at their hand of feet cards or opponent discard a card of your choice. Hard nut, lock any of your dice for the next reroll. So just more things you can do for feet cards. It's more variety more than anything. They're going to have a few of these encounters. So let's look at the red one first. Lights from Beyond. When this event's in place, player may play one feet card in their turn. So some limitations. You're going to have a couple of the medium. Uh, Dimension, Gate, and Monsoon Flood. And one green. So that's the papers, please. When a pawn is placed on this location, controlling player must choose two token types. Uh, each player may trade all their tokens of the first type for that many tokens of the second type, then discard this event. So, get a few more things you can do, and you have some new achievements. The Big Bad Collector for having swag cards, uh, seven tokens, and then to claim an account of type in your stash. So, uh, different achievements that will be added to the game. You're also going to get a new character. She starts with two courage. That's the big deal with her. So really no flow of the game difference. It's just these are modules. You can add this new character for the fifth player just for fun. You can add some of those cards into the deck. And you have the travel edition. Who should buy this expansion? This would be just for big fans of the game, of the base game. Who take a look at this uh, flow of the game and say, yes, this seems fun to me. Or you want to play it five players. Or you're wanting to travel part of this that comes with it to make it easy to travel with. Maybe that's something that you're after. Otherwise, um, this is probably going to be a miss for me. I'm not going to recommend it to a lot of people. Thanks for watching Purge Reviews. I really appreciate you watching. If you don't mind subscribing to the channel, it really helps things out.